Welcome to Bison Information Network News. I'm Anna Dragsa. And I'm Dash Menzel. We have a lot to cover tonight, so don't go away. North Dakota University system has opened the search for the 15th president of NDSU. It's now inviting applications and nominations for the position. The State Board of Higher Education and the NDSU Search Committee seek an inspiring, goal-oriented leader to set the university's direction for the future. Deadline for, ours, deadline for applications and nominations is November 22nd. The Center for Bioplastics and Biocomposites, known as CB2, which is located in NDSU, Iowa State University, Washington State University, and the University of Georgia, has been awarded Phase 2 of a National Science Foundation Industry University Cooperative Research Center's Program grant. The new funding, along with contributions from industry partners, will total $1.95 million and be shared among the four collaborating universities that comprise the center. On October 13th, from 3 to 4.30 p.m., Alice Marie Johnson, a former federal inmate who brings a passionate and personal perspective to criminal justice reform, will share her inspiring story from prison to promise. Johnson's story received worldwide attention when Kim Kardashian West advocated for her release from a mandatory life sentence without parole. After almost 22 years in federal prison for her first and only conviction in a nonviolent drug case, she was granted clemency by President Donald Trump in 2018 and received a full pardon in 2020. This talk will take place at the Central Louise Barry Auditorium at Barry Hall. If you are a criminal justice major and enjoy visiting different countries, NDSU has an opportunity for you. You can explore the criminal justice system in three different Scandinavian countries during the summer of 2022. Students will be able to gain first-hand experience meeting with experts in the field, visiting local government and law enforcement agencies, and even potentially touring a Norwegian prison. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for all students interested or majoring in criminal justice. Apply by November 1st. Now on the local news front, issues revolving around COVID remain high. Fargo hospitals are slammed with COVID cases. As of September 14th, 208 people are in the ICU with virus and 540 are in the hospital getting care for COVID-19 across the state. Medical professionals predict that this number could increase in the upcoming weeks. A Florida woman has died from injuries sustained in a car motorcycle collision last month. 32-year-old Charisma Utet of Fargo died at a Fargo hospital on Monday. She was the passenger on a motorcycle driven by 22-year-old Jansen Hernandez of Prior Lake, Minnesota. Hanson was he Hernandez was heading south on University Drive when he ran into the front driver's side door of a car driven by a 16-year-old Fargo girl on September 15th. The teenager was turning to go north. Homecoming's back and everyone's excited for it. This includes the Gold Star Marching Band. I was able to interview one of the band members to ask them what they were doing this homecoming week. The homecoming festivities are back and NDSU's Gold Star Marching Band knows it. I was able to talk to one of the band's trumpeters, Nate Toms, about what the band does on homecoming week and why they appreciate it. The Gold Star Marching Band, we, we always love to march every year, but homecoming is always a very special part of our year. Uh, we do a lot of more activities during the homecoming week. Uh, we try to be more actively involved with the students around campus and get them pumped and ready for the week ahead. So it's a very special week on campus for us every year. So we, uh, we always kick off the week with uh, the Homecoming Pep Fest out here in front of the Union. Uh, we love to get the students pumped up, you know. Um, it kicks off the barbecue for the day. Uh, it kicks off the presentation by President Brashani and other guests like um, Coach Entz. Uh, we get them pumped and then uh, later in the week then we move on to Thursday. We do the, the Blue Key Talent Show over in the Festival Concert Hall. Uh, the Blue Key Society does a talent show every homecoming week every year. So we always like to kick that off. You know, we play like the, the school song on Bison, uh, the fight song, and then one of our special favorites, Holiday or Hey Baby, one of those. Uh, we love to 
kick off the talent show though. It's a great way um, for homecoming week to go. Uh, and then we have, of course, the homecoming parade every Friday. Uh, so we basically just line up uh, in, down on Broadway in downtown Fargo. And we do our usual cadence down the street. Uh, we also like to play uh, on Bison down the street as well. Uh, get the crowd pumped up, ready for the game the next day especially. Uh, usually a really, really good game the next day um, on Saturday uh, where the Bison usually, it seems, last couple years, they take on Northern Iowa. Uh, this week they will as well. Uh, we always usually do our march over that morning. Uh, and then during the game we have our special show this year. Uh, we will be welcoming a special guest on campus, the nationally acclaimed Boston Brass, a uh, quintet of trumpets. Uh, and we'll be playing uh, a, a medley of Chicago music uh, by the band Chicago. Uh, and then uh, if you happen to miss our show on Saturday, we also will be playing it on the 23rd of October. Uh, when we'll be, we will be adding in our Earth, Wind, and Fire medley. So that, and then on Sunday, we'll conclude with playing at the girls' soccer game. Reporting for Bison Information Network, I'm Dash Mental. Thanks, Dash, for that great story. Of course. Stick around for another edition of Bison on the Street, as well as a sports update and weather. There are so many great things to experience at NDSU. It's hard to pick one, but my favorite is... The people. They make it such a warm place. The Bison aren't just across the country, they're across the globe. It's the perfect distance from home. The faculty are our biggest cheerleaders hands-on research experience, the affordable tuition, all the opportunities to stay active on campus, real-world learning experiences. Once I got on campus, it felt like home. The NDSU Bookstore has everything you need to show off your bison pride. The bookstore can have you sporting green and gold wherever you go. It offers many different brands, sizes, styles, and selection so that you find exactly what you're looking for. Shop the NDSU Bookstore and show your spirit today. No kid deserves to go hungry, but try as they might, not every family can afford to put food on the table every day. That's why the Great Plains Food Bank and their partner agencies work every day to bring food to our hungry neighbors. Every dollar donated can provide four meals for those in need. Go to greatplainsfoodbank.org and donate today so no kid in North Dakota ever has to go hungry. There are so many great things to experience at NDSU. It's hard to pick one, but my favorite is the people, they make it such a warm place. The Bison aren't just across the country, they're across the globe. It's the perfect distance from home. The faculty are our biggest cheerleaders. Hands-on research experience. The affordable tuition. All the opportunities to stay active on campus. Real world learning experiences. Once I got on campus, it felt like home. Welcome back, everyone. This week, Corey Hartle quizzed students on stuff they know versus stuff that they should know. Let's see how it went. Hello, everyone. I'm Coy. I'm here with Lexi for Bison on the Street. Are you ready? Yep. All right. <laughs> what does the acronym NATO stand for? I feel like I should know this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I haven't even heard of it before. I do not know. <laughs> National American Taco. <laughs> <laughs> no. North American Trade Organization. Close. North Atlantic Treaty Organization. What do the acronyms ROFL and TTYL stand for? Um, talk to you later and rolling on the floor laughing. Rolling on the floor laughing and talk to you later. Correct. Uh, talk to you later, TTYL. I don't know. I don't really oh. <laughs> Rolling on the floor laughing, talk to you later. Correct. All right. Who wrote the Declaration of Independence? Thomas Jefferson. Correct. Um, the Founding Fathers, basically. <laughs> George Washington. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Who wrote the Declaration of Independence? Um, <laughs> I don't know. All right. Who wrote the Harry Potter book? J.K. Rowling? Correct. J.K. Rowling. Um, J.K. Rowling? Correct. Can you name a country in Africa? Uh, Uganda. 
correct. Uh, Togo, Benin. I haven't even heard of those, but I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Can you name a country in Africa? Yeah. Chad. 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 Correct. Can you name the fictional country from Black Panther? Wakanda. 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 Correct. All right, what is the name of the national anthem? <laughs> it's the national anthem, isn't it? No. <laughs> There's a name for it? There is a name for it. Star Spangled Banner? The Star Spangled Banner. Star Spangled Banner? Correct. Can you name a Billie Eilish song? Bad Guy. Correct. Yeah, Ocean Eyes. This Bad Guy one? Yes. Bad Guy. Bad Guy. Correct. You should see me in a crown. All right. Can you name anyone on the Supreme Court? Mm, no. No. <laughs> Not a clue. <laughs> I know Ruth Bader Ginsburg was. <laughs> Can you name any current people on the Supreme Court? Um, what's his name? The one who had the controversy. Um, I can name two dead Supreme Court members. <laughs> that doesn't count. Then no. No, I don't think I can, but I know one of the guys got COVID. Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, uh, Justice, Chief Justice John Roberts, Breyer, I think is still on it. Yeah. Sonia Sotomayor. That was correct. Can you name anyone who is in One Direction? Harry Styles. <laughs> uh, Harry Styles. Uh, Harry Styles. Can you name anyone else? Um, Zayn. Harry Styles. Correct. That one dude whose name is Harry, I don't know. They're a bunch of random generic names. <laughs> that's what I know about. Harry Styles is the one. Yeah, gen that's pretty generic, I think. <laughs> Harry. Thanks, Koi. When we come back, Malik will give you guys a sports update. Don't go away. Technology Learning and Media Center, located in the Quinton Burdick Building, Room 150C, provides a variety of services to assist you with all of your technology-related coursework and personal learning goals. The TLMC offers one-on-one -on -one tutoring and assistance in topics ranging from basic computer skills to advanced topics such as design, Adobe products, and multimedia software. A resource library that includes books on the latest software releases. Online resources including a lynda.com kiosk that provide free access to high quality video tutorials on hundreds of topics. Free workshops on a variety of topics taught each semester by our student staff. Software and hardware for audio and video capture, conversion, and editing, plus personal assistance on your multimedia projects. Multiple scanners are available at the TLMC, including one large format scanner and a slide and film scanner. The Wacom tablet provides ultimate control in your favorite graphics and illustration software and can help you to create stunning digital artwork. Large format poster printing is also done at the TLMC. Our walk-in media resources include the Whisper Room sound booth for recording professional quality voiceovers and audio. The TLMC Media Studio is available by reservation and provides equipment and space for video recording, audio recording, studio photography, screen capture, and a green screen for special effects. If you have any questions on these services, be sure to visit the TLMC website. And while you're there, you can check out a variety of learning and media resources, or just stop by the next time you're in the Quinton Burdick building and check out what we have to offer. I have some sports updates for you today. Starting off with football, the Bison played the University of North Dakota this past Saturday and won 16 to 10. It was a hard fought game between the two teams, but ultimately the Bison came out on top. Their next game is against Northern Iowa this Saturday at the Fargo Dome at 1 p.m. This will be NDSU's annual homecoming game. I've got the preview coming right up. NDSU will be facing the 12th overall Northern Iowa Panthers for the annual homecoming game this Saturday at the Fargo Dome at 1 p.m. It will be their second conference game of the season. The Bison have won nine straight homecoming games since back-to-back -back losses in 2009 to Illinois State and Western Illinois. Last season, the Bison beat the Panthers 23-20 in the UNI Dome. 
This is the 55th meeting between North Dakota State and Northern Iowa and has won seven straight times against the Panthers. NDSU is leading the record between Northern Iowa 28 to 26. This series dates back all the way to 1938. UNI is one in six in the Fargo Dome and this is, will be Northern Iowa's fourth appearance at NDSU's homecoming. The Panthers are 3-1 so far, beating Sacramento State, St. Thomas, and Youngstown State. They impressively held Iowa State to one touchdown in a 16-10 loss in their opening game. Last season, they were 3-4. Even though they struggled last season, they still have some key players to look out for. You talk about Benny Sapp, you talk about Omar Brown, uh, re really good football players. Evans, the other corner, number 27. Uh, I think he, you saw Iowa State try to go his direction, and he really, I thought, played well in that game. Uh, offensive line, big. They got a big group of kids. They got the brothers from Mason City uh, right there in, in, in north central Iowa, really good physical players. The Bison are currently 4-0 this season, coming off a big win against University of North Dakota. After a hard-fought game, the Bison won 16-10. Even though they won against a tough team, there are still things they could have executed on. Uh, yeah, I wish we would have been a little more efficient uh, offensively. Uh, during the course of the game, we had, we had 10 explosive plays, uh, majority of them on the ground, uh, and we were inside the 50-yard line of our opponent five to six different times. Uh, the frustrating part of it comes down, you come away with three field goals, and uh, you know my, the defensive side of me or the D coordinator side of me would say, field goals get you beat. Well, this is one of those one-time one situations where they, they want us the ball game. Kickoff is at 1 p.m. in the Fargo Dome. You can also watch the number five ranked Bison take on the Panthers on ESPN+. For the Bison Information Network, I'm Malik Mitchell. Moving on to soccer, last Friday they played Oral Roberts and won 3-2 at the Dakota Field. They came back on Sunday and played Kansas City but unfortunately lost 1-0. Their next game is at the Dakota Field this Sunday against the University of North Dakota at 1 p.m. Pressing on the golf on Monday and Tuesday, the men's team had a meet in Denver, Colorado and competed in a paintbrush invitational. The team plays fourth at 11, at 11 schools. Their next match is October 24th at the Odu Kamarik Tournament. The women's team had a meet in Omaha, Nebraska for the, for the Stampede at Creek Tournament. The team plays first out of eight schools. Their next match is October 11th for the Pat Lesser Harbottle Invitational. And finally, last Tuesday, the volleyball team faced the University of South Dakota and lost 3-0. On Thursday, they played Western Illinois and won 3-2. Then on Saturday, they played St. Thomas and won 3-0 to end the week. Their next match is today at 7 p.m. at the Benson Bunker Fieldhouse. That's all I have for sports for you today. If you want to hear more details about sports, tune into our show, Bison Overtime, on Fridays at 11.30. When we come back, Cole will give you guys a weather update. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. deserves to go hungry, but try as they might, not every family can afford to put food on the table every day. That's why the Great Plains Food Bank and their partner agencies work every day to bring food to our hungry neighbors. Every dollar donated can provide four meals for those in need. Go to greatplainsfoodbank.org and donate today so no kid in North Dakota ever has to go hungry.
Good evening and welcome back to Bison Information Network. I'm Corey Hartle and I have a peek of the seven day forecast for you guys. This evening it should cool off a little bit as temps will drop to about 60 degrees with a small chance for rain that could persist throughout the day tomorrow. Tomorrow we can expect partly cloudy skies with a high of 76. On Saturday we'll likely have some showers in the morning that will develop into thunderstorms later in the day. So be sure to bring an umbrella if you plan on tailgating before the homecoming game. These showers will continue into Sunday morning and will start dissipating by the evening. As we kick off the beginning of the school week, we'll see a bit more sunshine with a high of 69 and a low of 49 degrees on, on Monday. Tuesday will have a little more cloud cover, but temps will remain about the same as Monday. Wednesday will cool off just a little bit more with a high of 65 degrees. We can also expect to see rain showers throughout the day. And finally, next Thursday will be the coldest day of the week with highs around 55 degrees and a low of about 40. Some of the rain will carry into the morning, but it should be done by the afternoon. So as you can see, we have lots of moisture coming our way throughout this next week, so be sure to plan accordingly. Thank you all for tuning into our show this week. For more on Bison Sports, be sure to tune in tomorrow at 11.30 to Bison Overtime and come back next Thursday for more news. Thanks for watching and have a great night.